I'm David Berlin with Information Week TV, and I'm standing at the Web2 Summit uh, Pavilion here with Michael Dell. Michael, thanks for joining me. Oh, great to be with you, David. So, uh, Michael, uh, so many things have been going on in the industry in the last year, a lot of big changes. Um, uh, one of the things I want to talk about first, the, the theme for this event is big data. And uh, that, that essentially means is there's a lot of data going on out there on the internet, and one of the big questions is, is how to distill all that data into something meaningful. How do you view big data? You know, I think, I think we have big data. What we really want are big decisions and big impacts. You know, we, we look at all the information that's being stored and there are lots of reasons to store information, right? You have regulatory reasons and compliance reasons. What you really want is better outcomes in your business and better decisions. And so that's really a, a great lens to think about all this in terms of, as, as a company, how do we evolve our business from products to solutions and really understanding what our customers are trying to accomplish. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's lots of data, but what do you actually want to get from it and what can you do with it? That's, that's what's really important to us. Arguably, Dell was probably a pioneer in big data because from the very first days when you were taking orders over the internet, you've been accumulating a huge amount of data on the people who visit Dell.com as well as your customers, a way to better serve them. So you can talk a little bit about that. How do you take all that data? What's an example of where you've done something, taken that data and turned it into some more success for your company? Well, certainly you think about you know, database marketing and sort of the more traditional ways that you use the list and all of the incredible uh, CRM data that, that you have. Now it's obviously morphed into social media and how we use the incredible interactions that we have, you know, two billion conversations a year with customers, how we use that feed of data to help us make better products and better services. We have a social media command center at Dell where we're constantly monitoring all the online conversations in the world that mention anything about our products, our services, uh, you know, and, and anything we offer and learning from that and becoming a better company from it. Does some of that work its way right back to you as anecdotal statements from your customers? It, it, it certainly works back to me, but you know, with a company with, with as many people as we have and all the things we're doing, it's got to be an institutionalized process. and and. I certainly see a lot of it and, and, and you know get excited about it. But but uh, you know it's a it's a it's kind of a business model, a, a, a business process flow in terms of how do you use that data to make yourself a better company. That's part of your culture is what you're saying. We like to think of it as having big ears and listening, and that's very much a genuine part of Dell's culture. It's how we grew our business from the very start and now we're doing it at scale, obviously with things like social media. Now let's turn the tables a little bit. Um, a lot of your customers themselves have to do the same sort of sentiment analysis that you're talking about and crunch other data. Uh, a lot of them are uh, trying to figure out how they're going to do that. How does Dell help them do that better with the gear that they offer? Interesting you should ask that. In our, in, our, in our services business, we've actually created a practice where we're helping customers make the most of social media. So setting up their own social media command centers. So certainly this would be for larger customers, but also just bringing customers in to Dell and explaining what we're doing and sharing those best practices and those learnings. Certainly from an infrastructure standpoint, we have all sorts of capabilities to be able to manage, store, protect, that data, do it very securely, uh, you know, so a full, full set of offerings. The, the first thing that comes to mind when a customer or when somebody like me thinks about, well, I need some compute power, uh, some server-based compute power, how do I do that efficiently, cheaply with my credit card in a day or so, is to go to somebody like an Amazon or a Rackspace. Uh, how does a company like Dell succeed in that world where more and more people are putting their servers in the cloud? You know, we sell, uh, in the last decade, we've sold over 15 million servers, and a lot of them uh, end up in service providers, like the two guys you mentioned, so they're our customers, we appreciate that. But you see a highly distributed nature to the where servers and storage and compute power actually ends up. We, we're building also at Dell our own private cloud. So if customers want to move 
some part of their workload, their entire workload to our secure cloud. They can do that. A lot of customers are building their own infrastructure still. And then there are the cloud providers that are out there, and those are certainly great options for customers too. What's a secure cloud? I mean, it sounds like you're differentiating what you offer from what Amazon or Rackspace offers. What, what does that mean, secure cloud? A, a, we think of it as a secure private cloud. So this is a very secure instance dedicated for an individual customer where we're guaranteeing SLA, we're guaranteeing privacy, we're guaranteeing a level of security that's generally not available in, let's say, public cloud providers. Is there a difference between that and your basic server-based hosting? There are some pretty big, pretty big differences, and, and um, you know certainly um, the SLA requirements that some of our larger customers have. We also have extensive capability in security, so we monitor over 15 billion security events a day through our Dell SecureWorks organization. We discover 100,000 new varieties of malware every single day out there in the wild. So we have an intense level of security expertise that allows us to provide a level of protection that uh, you know, is, is really unparalleled. Okay, one more question or one more theme I want to cover, which I think you know, Dell's had a, a pretty rich history, is um, in the area of consumerization of IT. I mean, that's sort of code for these, uh, a lot of products that would be considered personal technology now entering the workplace. People are using them to get their jobs done. They're not waiting for the IT department to give them some other tool. They just, they're comfortable with what they've got already. Uh, how is Dell going to succeed in that world, given that so much of it is about mobile and tablets and smartphones, and there's a couple leaders there already? You know, our, our business is, is not just about devices, it's about solutions. So, you know, one of our customers in, is a company in China called Tencent, and they have 650 million customers. Everyone in China that uses a cell phone tends to use the Tencent service. So our business is not just about devices, it's about, it's about the solutions that those, those devices draw data and draw services from. So all the growth on the web, you know, that's certainly part of our business. In consumerization, certainly you, know, you have to create great devices, but you also have to secure them, you have to protect them, you have to encrypt them, you have to have secure containers. How do you ensure, for example, that in an organization, if somebody puts corporate data on a consumer device, and then they walk out the door, well, uh, you know, th this is a, a data leak, and you know, how do you protect that, that environment? Those are the kind of things that we're very much involved in with our customers, creating the capabilities to secure that, even on a personal device. So, the personal devices being smartphones? Smartphones, uh, tablets, any kind of device, whether it's a, you know, um, a, you know, three, four, 10 inch, 15 inch, whatever it may be. So, is this a service that you're providing for them, regardless of what device they use, or are we talking about some uh, master strategy involving Dell devices? We're providing it in a multi-vendor fashion because that's the environment our customers work in. Multi-vendor services is a big deal for us. There's been a lot of turmoil in the industry and customers have looked to us to provide services for not only the products we sell, but you know, the whole range of products that a customer may have in their install base or even the ones that the you know, individual consumer customers are bringing in. Any cool mobile offerings that we can look for Dell to be providing in the near future? But you know, when you look at the three trillion dollar IT industry, we tend to focus on the 2.75 trillion that's not really the consumer layer. So we're mostly in the business institution, government space. Certainly we're coming out with all kinds of new devices and, and products all the time, but we tend, the real shift at Dell in the last few years is moving really from the products to solutions and services and understanding the real problem our customer's trying to solve, which is generally not the device, it's making their business perform more effectively, having better outcomes for the patients in their hospital or for the students in their school, making their supply chain work more effectively. Those are the kinds of things that Dell's doing. So we have 45,000 people now in Dell services out of 110,000. So that's really the, the way we think about our business today. Okay, well, Michael Dell, thank you very much for the interview. Much appreciate it. Have a great time here at Web2 Summit. Sure thing, thank you.